Hello, hello, this is Simone. I think it's it's the middle of May or more towards the end of May, May 20th, 2019. Um, and I think it's time for an update. I have been meaning to update you all on my planner and journaling and memory keeping process and how things are going for a while. And today I decided I'm just gonna sit down and Let's see how long this is going to take, but I am giving you a brief overview on my planners and journals that I'm currently using and the ones that I uh, retired and I'm not using anymore. And then uh, for some of them, I will do separate videos to show a more in-depth look at what I did or created with them. Let me start by showing you my planner because this is the most consistent thing that I have been using in 2019. This is my A5 Slim Jibun Techo Biz. It is back in its original cover. This is a plastic slip-on cover, um, makes it very slim. I had briefly used a Foxy Fix perfect fit cover, which I didn't like with this. So I went back and sold my cover. Um, I have one of the notebooks, idea notebooks from Kukuyu in the front. Um, and then I have my planner in the back and then um, nothing else really. I stuck this one, this I had in the front pocket here, but it always moved all the way down. So I just put that girl over here. And then I added some, I don't, I don't even really know what this is. It's just some, some sticky notes that I might be using stuck to a receipt. Um, I am using this on and off. Well, I'm actually using it almost daily, definitely weekly to get an overview of my week. This is the current one. And yes, I cut out this part because I had actually eaten lunch and a salad when I was setting up the week yesterday. I think so, yeah, that was yesterday, Sunday. And some of the salad dressing spilled over here and I didn't want to get grease marks and olive oil seeping through my paper. So I just used the scissor and cut it out before anything happened. Um, as you can see right now, we are towards the end of the school year. We are at the end of the baseball season. I am working a lot because our store is, um, short-staffed hiring people and yeah so this means that planning has been really slow i have not been keeping up with my weekly to-do list the only thing that i have been doing is getting up working breathing eating feeding my family getting my kids to the places they have to be and then falling into my bed at night um trying to survive so there hasn't been a lot of other things than the regular things that are happening. However, I still use this and my family has now really quite constantly for the last one and a half, two months, uh, been planning our week out, weeks out on Sunday. And this is what I use to write things down that I have to do. Um, I usually mark my work hours with boxes right here. I would love to have the stencil, stencil, but I don't. So I just freehand it and that's why it looks so wonky. And then I use a, a mild liner to mark them. Um, it's just more visually, or I can see, wow, this is another full week here. Um, I use red, um, where's my pen? Yeah, not prepared. So I try, I, for some reason, I usually have in my pen pouch, I have this jet pens. 
uh, the Jetstream, Uniball Jetstream 3 with blue, black and red. And this is the same as the pen that comes with the Hobonichi. I just purchased it separately because I really, really like uh, the way it writes. I usually have two mild liners in here, here and for some reason, I don't know why I started doing this, I'm swapping out the color that I use to mark the, the hours that I work every month. So here you can see, um, this is what it looks like. Um, and now I put in another color for June and then this is a mechanical pencil. So this is what I usually carry with me all of the time. It's always in my backpack or it sits on the table. Um, in the past week, week and a half, not so much. Sometimes I just, I'm too lazy to get it out. Um, but that is what usually happens. I am not too concerned that this is happening right now, that I'm not using it that much, that I'm just on survival mode. I know that this will change. And so I'm just gonna continue and doing, still using this to help me, but maybe not as much as I st had been using it. Look at this compared to this. You can see this looks more like survival mode than this. And I'm totally fine with it because I know it will change. This is just the way that maze usually look. Um, I use red to add to do's that I need to do. I use black to mark out appointments, th also things that I have to do, but those are time specific appointments. These are my to do lists that I have to work on every day. Um, I usually really like the way to add them right in between my days when I don't know that there is a time specific or day specific uh, task it goes here but when i want to or know that i need to do things on today maybe i will add them here because having the to-do list right in between my appointments and my routine things that i do shows me how much time there really is it is real i have realized that if there is just this much space, there is probably only time for lunch and nothing more. And so it is really helpful for me to have that vertical view, to have that hourly, and to really um, have that space limit um, from making a totally a to-do list that is not doable in that amount of time that is there. So. It really works for me to just add it in here and I know, yeah, I have time to film because there's not much to do. Um, and I still need to sign up for divisionals because I have to measure my son first before I can do that. Um, and I would love to do that before I go and pick up my son from school. So. You can see that's why the to-do list task is before that. This is what I usually and always do. Um, sometimes when things aren't really sure, I use the pencil. I use the pencil to add in um, meals because they might change. And then I use blue for things that will happen that I might to have something to do with, like I need to make sure that my son wears concert attire before we leave, or takes his concert attire before we leave, but I am not actually going to be at the concert because probably if it's not going to rain, I am going to be at a game of my other son. So that's why it's in pencil because we have had the worst weather. It's been raining a lot. So this is an example of my week and the way I use it to plan. As I said, these past weeks and days, it has been closed mostly because I have been working so much. Um, but 
when I'm back on track, I usually add all the things that I really, really have to do to survive, that are necessary, that are time sensitive, they will get done with this. But as you can see, this list hasn't been worked on, it hasn't been checked off, I haven't done any of this. When I have time, when I'm motivated again, when I can breathe again, when it's not only survival mode, I will go back to the last time that was here and will pick up, pick up where I left off. So how do I know that this is the last week that I was able to do? Because I am actually checking off every week that has been that I have taken the task, either they're all done or they have been moved forward and I will check it off. So I know this is the place where I need to start looking at things again. This is my planner for that I use all the time. Then I have the Jibun Techo comes with monthlies. I, again, May is different. June might be different too. I will definitely start using this again in August when school starts back up again. But I usually set up the month in the beginning of the month or at the end of the last month to see how busy is my month going to be, what's, what are the weekends going to look like, is someone not here, do we have holidays, do we have games, do we have any appointments, things like that go in here so I can see at a glance how busy my life is going to be. I can mentally prepare myself for this. Usually I have monthly goals and I try to transfer everything that wasn't time sensitive or that needs to get done someday maybe onto here. As I said before that hasn't happened yet. Once I'm back to normal I will get there again. I have been decorating it more or less. This is how I like it. Um, I haven't been covering the dates anymore. It's totally fine like this and this is fine as well. I really like having this, um, these things that when people are gone or yeah, same, I wasn't here, visually popping out. So this is almost too faint to be honest. And then I tracked uh, things that I purchased down here and I wrote down the shops. However, I haven't really been shopping since I started my no spend Lent and so I don't really need that tracker anymore. Well, I did actually purchase three things in the, over the weekend, which is I ordered something off of Amazon and then I pre-ordered a pin from Shelly Can, and then I ordered a uh, yarn, yarn. So I need to track this and make sure I get it because those things won't be shipped, besides the Amazon things, won't be shipped for a while. So that is how I use the monthlies. And as you can see, I have been using those a lot. And then, in these trackers, I, have, I haven't really been a tracker. So in December, that was the first month that I wanted to use it. I thought I was going to use it as a budget tracker, didn't work. And then I set myself goals in the beginning of the year and I uh, put those different goals down here and then I tracked how much I worked on them. I decided they weren't, I didn't want them to be pressuring me, like I knew that I wasn't really going to knit on socks in that month, but it helped me look at, so when this didn't happen for a long time, in the middle of the month, I started to ask myself, what do I need to do? What steps do I need to do to make this happen? And then I decided on a pattern and then I purchased more um, fabric. And so I started working on it 
And then, um, actually, I didn't really work a lot on this quilt that I made for my mom because it was maybe two weekends here and here, and then it was done. Uh, my goal was to take it to my mom and give it to her in June. But at the beginning, at the end of April, I also saw my mom. I went to the wedding of my sister and I was actually done before I went to the wedding. So I finished this goal way early and I was able to take it there. So what else? I I then started tracking these things and uh, tracked my tips, tracked my spending down here, tracked how much mail I sent. And that was really fun and helped me visualize what I'm spending my time on and how I maybe need to rethink my goals. That has helped me a lot. I have tracked since the beginning. So since at the beginning of the year I have been tracking. I changed the way I worded these things. So I, um, in February and March, I still tracked my memory planner, my logbook and my journaling in three different um, lines. And then I decided to put it all under the 100 day project, which I started in on the 2nd of April and then decided to not continue on April 24th. But that's a different story. I decided to put the journaling or the, oh yeah, I set it up when I didn't think, but this is all paper creating. So I have been doing that a lot lately. So I actually need to do um, this. I think the only time I didn't work on that was the weekend. So I am changing the categories and switching them up, refining them as I go along. For instance, I don't need to track the quilt anymore because I'm done with it. Um, I started to put the sewing category here. I'm not really sewing this month. As you can see, it's the 20th and I haven't done anything but I'm really intending to, and so I think I'll keep it there. It might not happen in June, and but then in July, it probably will. So I'm still tweaking the categories, seeing what works for me, what doesn't, and tracking my spending and tracking my tips as well. Um, not so much the spending, actually, because I'm really not, I have another tracker that I put on the spending, I just made crosses when I actually spent money. So that is my tracker. It works really, really well. I really like looking at it. And um, I, when I get back on track in August at the latest, I will definitely continue um, being more mindful of this. I repurposed a page in here. I don't even know what it is for. Um, as a budget tracker. When I did the No Spend Lent in March and April, I decided to give myself a budget. And then uh, I have post-it notes here where I put down the things that I want to purchase. And then and on one certain day, I pick things and I purchase. And um, Due to the political development here, I decided to spend my money on uh, little stores that support um, Planned Parenthood or other associated company, not companies, uh, organizations and purchase products where I know that those will donate. I also need a longer cable for my knitting, my interchangeable um, knitting needles and so I purchased that as well and now I'm done spending for May and these things that I would like to have will then have to wait until June. Let's see how that works. Right now I feel like I am not spending as much money as I was before I went on that no spend lend and I hope to keep this like that for a long while. Now um, this recurring tasks list, as you can see, is not working at all. I 
However, I do have a husband who is very much um, making my kids do all of the cleaning right now. Um, and that works out in my favor, so I don't really need to track because he keeps, he keeps track. I used this as an ongoing uh, meal planner. I love you doing this at, for two, three weeks at one time. Again, this has been falling off the wayside, but I will definitely go back to this once we are back on track. After we are going on vacation and once I'm back from there, I will definitely go back to doing this because I love not worrying about food and meal planning for a long time. It, I don't know why, but meals stress me. Not knowing what to make stresses me out. This idea book has been the same for a long time. I have added uh, things that I use over and over again, like this grocery guide, the meals, the list of meals that we like to eat, video ideas, I just add in ideas as I go along. I haven't been purchasing planner stickers for a long time because I wanted to question myself if I really needed to purchase so many because I have a, long, have a lot of them. And so I just put those here that I think might be missing once I am just cannot resist the urge to purchase cute stickers. I can look at this list and see what I really need. And this was a... I think a schedule for something and I just repurposed the list because I never wrote it down. I have put down some ideas that I might want to do. I planned a zine here. Um, I put video notes here for a lot of my videos. I have a list with people that I would like to send mail to. Then I made something that I really like because this goes along with my mailing list. I would love to send mail to the people that I know and that I like uh, on their birthdays. But if I don't know when, ha when their birthday is, then it's hard to send mail. And so I'm trying, really trying, not very successful to send them some kind of happy mail for their birthday. And that is the um, calendar for this. I then wrote down, all my reflections for my no spent Lent. I wrote down stuff for my job, for the ASU that I want to attend, and then also for the planner video that I'm doing right now. And haven't really looked at this for a long time because I wanted to film this video for like two or three weeks. I talked about all of this um, what is not working that well is the cleaning schedule. I told you about that. And the goals and brain dump on the monthly has not been working. But I think this is because of the end of the school year. So what I else I wanted to tell you is that I am itching to try something smaller. I think, not sure yet, for next year, given the fact that this is quite white still. I think I measured it before and I think I could go with the uh, B6 and still have enough room for everything. I am also very, very inspired and I'm not sure if I want to go that route by Sarah M Martinez. Uh, if you don't watch her videos, I highly recommend her videos. Um, she's using a Hobonichi A6 and yeah, so I don't know. Right now, since this is working so well, I, I'm i still on the Jibunteto track. So I think I'm gravitating towards the B6 though. Um, I do have thoughts on maybe repurposing this um, Nanami A6 into a Hobonichi kind of thing where I just don't buy the Hobonichi and use this and just buy the weekly supplement for um, that and so I could use up the things that I have. That comes from the no spend lent and using the things that I have. Um, do I really need to purchase a Hobonichi 
If I want to go that route, do I really need to purchase a Hobonichi A6 for 2020? Or do I just buy the weekly supplement where I would then put these time, time things in and use this as a daily task list? Do I really need the Hobonichi or can I just use what I have on hand already? I am not decided yet. It is the end of May. I don't have to decide and I will just see what happens. But those were my thoughts two weeks ago. Right now I'm more gravitating towards the Jibun Techo B6. Okay, now that was all about my planner stuff. I have the, I put out the Hobonichi weeks because I showed this to you before. I did two weeks in at the end of January, beginning of February, when I was really like itching to use this little book. Um, and then I wanted to do the lettering challenge with Lama Loves Lettering. Didn't do that. I am not using this. And um, I'm totally fine with it. I, that's why I want to show this. I'm okay when this is going to waste for the year. I might keep it or I'll just trash it. Uh, either way, I decided to not uh, beat myself up on this. I would, I, as much as I love the size and the paper, um, I'm just not, not anymore because I was for a long time one of those people who like the weeks, the weekly setup like this. So I just have to uh, let this trend pass by me because that's just not me. Done. I will definitely reuse the sticker though or die cut. Okay, now what I have been doing for the longest time is I used my logbook. Um, and then I went, I said I went away in, the, in May. I left on Thursday, May 25th and went to see my family and attend my sister's wedding. And that is the last week that I actually documented in here. And I just didn't feel like I wanted to come back to this. I don't know if this is just not going to be finished, but I am again not going to beat myself up about this. this insert has served me so well. I loved using it every minute. And even though it is not finished in the sense that the pages are not filled up all the way, I am just deciding that it has served its purpose. I loved it and I'm not going to make myself not like it because there's pages left and force myself to do it. There might be weeks where I want to do this and then I have some room to, to finish it off if this will never happen. Everything's fine. I'm still in love with how this turned out. I'm just not feeling drawn to this at the moment and that's okay. So if you want to see what this, video, what this um, insert looks like, I'm very happy to film a flip through for you. Um, maybe not this week, maybe next week when I have a little bit more time. But this was an amazing thing and I, I loved every minute of it. And when I started to fall out of love with it, I decided to stop. So here it is. It is housed in this traveler's notebook in the camel color. And yeah, I, the format of this is amazing. So what I decided to do was my friend Cheryl Reiter gave this insert, no, this cover to me uh, in the fall. It is a, I don't know the color name. It's a beautiful dark red. On the inside you can see it's very reddish here. Um, a single Foxy Fix in the passport size. And I made this little insert using just what I had in my stash. This is actually printables for a ring 
planner inserts and I just took the pages that I wanted to use, cut it to size. As you can see, there's cutting marks here and there is like, uh, it's not printed all the way to the edge because you were supposed to cut the page down here. I just made a passport size insert from this, used some scrapbooking paper and have my trip from uh, Friday, the May 26th through um, a weekend later, like Sunday, May 5th, um, I put it all in here and put this insert right in here and had this wallet that I wanted to use um, um, in my passport setup, but I never did because it just didn't feel like me. Um, I had this insert in here. I put my wallet in here. I had my ticket stub here, my boarding pass. I put all the things. I have my German driver's license in here, uh, my pass, my German ID, everything that I need when I go to go home, home is in here. Um, the rest of my wallet fits right in here. It's one of those card sleeves from Foxy Fix. Fits right in here. And actually this pocket is amazing because when the... So if I have it in here and then I put the elastic around it, it cannot fall out. So that's awesome. What I did, it this actually has one of those, has the initial or of Car Cheryl's last name on here and I didn't really care for that. So I found this awesome button and just went ahead, punched two holes into the leather and stitched the button on. And I really, really like how that turned out. So I added this uh, embellishment to the outside of the traveler's notebook and I'm going to keep this my travel wallet. I had my passport slipped in onto the elastic here, but it wasn't really very um, useful because uh, the people at the border usually want to have your passport and not all of this. And so I just clipped it on here and it's in here. Again, as I said, the elastic holds it from falling out this way. I might add another clip down here and I can just clip it out and hand it to the uh, border patrol or whatever these, those officers are called. And I have all the necessary things with me. I love how this turned out. And I will definitely, again, film a flip through this mini album. I did not, as I had thought I was going to do, journal every day in this and do this. in here just on daily pages. That's what I had originally planned. Um, but I really like how this turned out and I again, I want to show you what I liked and didn't like about the size and about the way I used this in another video. So stay tuned for those. I, I'm still using this B6. It's a Mystics Little Gifts B6 um, traveler's notebook that I purchased secondhand. Um, the color is carbon and it has turquoise stitching and elastics and I love this charm from Coco Daisy that it just, I will never change this out. This was made to be on this <laughs> traveler's notebook. I am using this as my creative, um, it's not a real journal in the sense I use this to write about the projects that I'm working on, but also as kind of a journal. So here are the projects. I wrote down some instructions, but I also put in photos, uh, business cards, things that I create using the patterns that I'm using. And once this is done, I already have a an insert in here. I don't know where this comes from. I think this was included in, came with this notebook. Uh, the seller just gave this to me 
and I don't know what paper quality it is. I like that it's thick and dot grid and I'm just gonna continue on using this. I created the cover using adding stamps onto a big block of ac acrylic block and then stamping it off like this and created a pattern paper. You can see there's repeats on there. I really, really love how this turned out. This is so easy to do and it makes such a great effect. So if you want to try something like that, pull out your stamp and stamps and try it. It's awesome. I'm having one of those clips on here. I originally wanted to use this Muji insert as my next knitting journal, but I'm, I didn't like, I, I really like the paper, but it's just very thin. And so when I had got my hands on this one, I found it in my stash and I thought, well, this is more, um, how I like the knitting journal to be. And so I'm just going to use this first. And once I'm done with it, this, maybe I'm going to move on to this one. But for now, it has this clip on here and I'm just using the, what is that? This clip here to hook it into there. And then I always have a pen with my knitting journal. And this actually is in my knitting bag so I can put all the things that I need to write down in on there. Okay. Let's move on here. I was so inspired last year. I journaled for almost six months straight daily uh, in an A6 Hobonichi. I wrote one page per day. It helped me so much through my anxiety and all the things. And I really started out the year very motivated in an Stalogy A6. I changed then to this um, Nanami insert. This is a cafe note, also in the A6 size, but for some reason or another, I cannot really tell you why. I was, I lost interest or I was very, um, I don't know what, what was the problem, but something just didn't work for me. And if you, look at this and see how much space it takes. And then what I'm using now, I probably think I know why this happened. So first of all, I had the uh, idea that I really needed to write a lot daily, which didn't happen. Um, and then I kind of like decorating, but when I decorated, it almost took over the entire page. And um, that was something that I just didn't like. Uh, I thought about using this as a quotes journal where I would write quotes every day. Didn't like it. It was frequent in the beginning and then it died down. Um, and at that point, I decided that I would just give myself permission to stop. I'm, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is use a sharp knife and cut along this, or actually, since this is bound here and this is, I will just take that signature that is, I think it's either here or a couple of pages more and will cut it out so as not to ruin that specific signature, cut it out and add a backing to this and just archive what I have and then add another cover to this side and reuse it for something else if I ever have the need or if I have an idea. As I said before, maybe I want to use it as a daily planner. I still have time to decide on that, but then I would um, be able to free this insert and take away. I am not, I don't feel the guilt that I felt like three or four months ago. I don't know what, what exactly happened to make this change in my thinking, but I'm very happy this happened. So I am really okay with cutting this out, archiving this and repurposing or giving away whatever the empty pages in this. And 
Then I wanted to start an A5 journal for the longest time. I have been inspired by Mitz to do something similar. She uses a Hobonichi, but I don't think I want a dated notebook for the reason that I'm not doing this on a daily basis and I'm also not filling a page per day. Um, again, there is a big gap in between this and the start of this. It was mainly because I was afraid of starting. And one day after I got back from um, visiting my family and I was done using this, I or done making this, I decided why don't I just start? And I slapped down some watercolor, wrote just start and didn't do anything else but that. And then um, I just started and this is what happened. I really love the process, the creative process that goes into this. I, if I want to use watercolor and slap some watercolors on some, some pages, I can just open a page that is free and just add some watercolor and then call it done. That takes five minutes. It needs to dry. If I have five minutes and I want to do something, I can just do that. I can keep on creating and creating clusters of embellishments, but still, as you can see, have enough space to add a quote. This is a text message my son sent to me. A sticker, washi tape, something. I have this huge box that I, of all the things that I have been collecting for a journal like this, that I'm just rummaging through and if I find something that I want to put somewhere, I'm just adding it to the page like this. I created this cluster, doesn't really need to make sense. This is from a tomato, this is a sticker from a sticker book from Amy Tangerine, this is from Coco Daisy, this is real, no, not Amy Tangerine, Chamel. This is also from that same sticker book. There's watercolor behind. I added this huge arrow. And even though I didn't journal after Friday, today's Monday, I'm, I don't know when I will go back. I might write something down. I, I'll find a quote and have a space to add it. Maybe I'll add it here. Maybe I use watercolor and add it onto an open page. This is what I feel like I need right now. And this was very, very structured. Um, I didn't feel like I wanted to continue with this and that's okay. It's a different season in my life. And so I'm just going to enjoy this season as long as it lasts. And I, I'm so, <laughs> I was so afraid of starting and I just, decided at that day, which was May 10th, to just start and let my creativity take the lead and just create it. And I was so surprised when this is what happened. And I'm just trusting in that creative process and that I know and my creative mind knows what to do with those pages. So much fun. So if you ever wanted to try something like this, don't not do it. Just start and see where it takes you. It's not the end of the world if you only create five pages. If that's all that makes you happy and if that's all you need, three pages are better than none at all. So that is what I have in my pantry. I'm writing and talking with my hands a lot. I have this in my pantry. I think I'm gonna take you over there in a second. So this is the messy truth of my pantry. This is the half of my pantry that houses all of my scrapbooking supplies and journaling supplies. And I repurposed this Ikea box. It was a 99 cent box um, and put in all the things, leftover planner things, leftover um, scrapbooking things, things that I just really like using for journaling purposes. Just put them all in here and I'm just rifling through this when I'm working and slapping down things 
uh, not really thinking too much about it um, because I don't really want to use them up. I have one of those sticker books that I created last year in here. Those are stickers that I have kind of forgotten about. Look at those beautiful stickers. I don't really know why I haven't used them yet. So I like that they're really small. They I love adding them in between open spaces. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. So I have my, my watercolor set underneath. I have stamps over here. There's my water, my dirty. There's stamps over here that I can use. I really, really love using Brandy Kincaid stamps and I need to use them in this journal, definitely. Um, I have my washies right in front of me. I have all of the pens. This is my stamp chamois from Lawn Fawn. I have pens here, pens in here. I have things I want to send to my friend, more stamps. Um, my trusty date stamp, I love this thing so much. I purchased it for like six bucks on Amazon. It was one of the best purchases of 2019. I have a speaker to you listen to podcasts and here's all of my planner stickers that I used for my journal or my yeah my logbook and I decided I'm definitely going to use them in this journal as well and so yeah everything that I need is right here I can use my little bar stool or just stand here and put my journal here open it up and just whatever whichever medium I want to use I can use okay and right now this is exactly what makes me happy and I'm so happy I found this and I dared to start last thing I wanted to talk about is my glorious fail no I'm not Let's be real, I can still continue with this. I'm just not enjoying it as much right now. Um, I'm not taking as many photos. I'm not really taking a lot of photos. I'm not very inspired to take very many photos. Maybe because my I feel so, or I'm on this survival mode that I talked about when I showed you my planner. Maybe that's the reason why, but I'm okay with that. However, documenting life with photos when you don't have very many photos or when the photos that you take do not reflect your everyday life is just not really happening. And so I haven't really documented anything beyond March. And I think I didn't even finish March. So I have photos here. I have ephemera that I could add in. And if I look at the pages here, I can see, I can see where the urge and the way to create in here is coming from. I can see it in here, that trend towards this. Um, I don't know yet how I feel about um, not using photos. Um, maybe I will just add photos in here. However, I don't like when the pages are too thin and there are so many photos. So maybe I need to print them on just regular color paper. Don't know yet. I haven't thought about it. I'm just leaving this in my um, cupboard and I'm still um, having photo albums every week or my photos in my computer saves all the photos that I take during the weeks and sorts them in each week. And so I can, if I want to, uh, just print out the photos relevant to each of the weeks and go back and document it if I want to. Um, I'm not making that decision right now. This project is on hold for the moment, but I am working on Project Live from 2018. I'm working, going, once I'm done with that, I'm going back to uh, the years that I haven't finished. So it's not a big deal. Right now, I know that I definitely won't continue documenting, photo documenting my life in this way. I might find a different way for next year, but I'm definitely not continuing with that um, 
beyond 2019. Oh, so I talked a lot. I would love to hear from you. Um, I still haven't replied to comments from you in on my two videos and I feel so bad about it. I really need to go back. I don't even know if when you commented a month ago on a video and I didn't reply, does it make sense to reply now? I don't know. So I'm really looking forward to what changed for you in the first six months of this year. Well, it's not not for real. In the first five months of this year, are you still doing all the things that you wanted to do in the beginning? Do you feel guilty about it? I, for the first time this year, really, I do not feel guilty about this. And if I w would be able to, I wish I would could tell you what made this shift. I think it started for me that I was able to let go of this guilt uh, when I started my no spent Lent. Something changed and I really need to um, reflect before I am able to um, really tell you what exactly that was, but I'm very happy it did because it um, makes creating in the moment and starting something new just so mo much more enjoyable. And most of this, except for the planning, this is more to make my life work. But most of the other things I do because I enjoy them. They are kind of therapy for me. And um, having guilty feelings about things that I enjoy really t sucks most of the joy out of it. And so being able to let go of those is such a great thing. So thank you so much for giving, spending so much time with me. I really enjoyed um, talking and to you giving this update and just sharing again. I have missed you and I hope I will be able to film videos throughout the summer. They will not, definitely not be as frequent as they have been before. Um, let's just hope I will be able to pop in monthly so I can give you updates on how I'm doing and I would love to hear how you are doing. This is the longest ending ever. I hope to see you soon. Until then, have a great time. See you.